So once again, thank you for subscribing in my YouTube video channel, which is CPA Dreams. And if you are really looking for something to read about how to be an effective student, so please, on the description below, there's a link where you can download my free ebook, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Students. Okay, so this is the link. So please go onto the description and sign up to download it. I will send it to you after you sign up on the link. Okay, today our topic actually is about management advisory services. So many requests about financial ratios. So I'm going to uh, chop the lessons for financial ratios because we have different categories of financial ratios. So, but for today, our agenda is liquidity ratios. Our learning outcomes, I'm going to give you the different liquidity ratios with its formula and uh, explanation. In liquidity, in financial ratios, actually, what you really need to understand is what the number represents. So we have different categories. So we have liquidity ratio, we have activity ratio, profitability ratio, leverage ratio, and market value ratio. Now, what is liquidity ratios? These are the ability uh, of this ratio is to measure if the company can pay its short-term obligations with its short-term assets. So meaning, uh, this is the way that investors, creditors, customers will look at how the management or the company run its current assets, which compose of cash, marketable securities, prepayments, inventory, with, the, with also the liabilities to pay the creditors, the accounts payable, the notes payable, the short-term obligations, the accruals, tax, uh, and earned revenue. So this is really useful and helpful to see how the management of the company run their uh, operations, normal operating cycle. Okay, so what are the liquidity ratios? We have current ratio, quick asset ratio, cash ratio, cash flow ratio, and net working capital ratio. Okay, I will go through one by one with their formula and uh, definition. At the end, we will see as well sensitivity analysis and how the formula uh, affects the numerator and the denominator. Now, for the current ratio, this is the measure in which current assets cover current liabilities. So this higher the ratio indicates greater liquidity. So meaning the company is very liquid. They have enough cash, inventory, uh, marketable securities that they can be converted easily into cash and cover all their liabilities, meaning their obligations to their suppliers, the obligation to their short-term creditors, their obligation to pay the tax, their unearned revenue. So uh, this ratio, actually, this is the formula, which is current assets over current liabilities. So your numerator are the following, cash, receivables, inventory, and marketable securities, which is short-term investments. And here also includes the prepayments, okay, the prepaid. And then for the current liabilities, you have here your short-term debts, meaning your suppliers, the accounts payable, the notes payable, your accruals for compensation, for salaries, your unearned revenue, and other short-term uh, liabilities. Again, here, the higher the ratio is always favorable than a lower current ratio. Why? Because the company can more easily make current debt payments, okay? So the next liquidity ratio is the quick asset test ratio or quick asset ratio, okay? When you say quick asset ratio, this is more conservative than the current ratio. Why? Because you, in, you exclude inventories and prepayments in the formula. 
Okay, so meaning the formula will be cash plus marketable securities plus net receivables divided by or the denominator will be current liabilities. So here, you need to understand that that strong current ratio and weak acid test ratio indicates a potential problem in the inventory's account. Why? Because the possibility in the current ratio that you have a higher inventories and less cash. So then that will be the specific issue. Okay, now let's go with another liquidity ratio, which is the cash ratio. Here, it's very conservative, okay, against comparing to current and quick ratio because you exclude inventories, prepayments, and receivables, okay? The cash flow ratio actually measures the firm's ability. Again, here is very, very liquid, meaning your cash and the marketable securities because marketable securities are those short-term or the trading or available securities that you can convert it easily because it is traded regularly in a specific market. Okay, and then... Uh, here, the denominator will be current liabilities, okay? Next, cash flow ratio. Now, we are talking about the operating cash flow of the business. So, meaning here, you exclude everything, only the operating cash, okay? And then, of course, the denominator will be the current liability. So, here, okay, this is the best measurement at the end of the day. Okay, because you are going to see really if the, if the company already have their cash to use for their daily operations. Now, networking capital. You already know that this networking capital reports the resources the company would have to continue operating in the short run. If it will pay off all of its current liabilities. From the definition itself, the formula is current assets less current liabilities. So it's going to be alarming if you have more liabilities than your uh, current assets. Okay, so then the simple formula for net working capital ratio is, of course, current assets minus current liabilities are the numerator. And then the, uh, the denominator will be the total assets. Okay? So, let's do some sensitivity analysis, okay? If there is a change, what will be the effect on the ratios? So, increase in numerator, the effect is always an increase in the ratio. Decrease in the numerator, of course, this is a decrease in the ratio, meaning it's directly correlated, okay? And then increase in denominator, decrease in the ratio okay now it's in inverse decrease in denominator that is increase in the ratio okay so this please take a screenshot of it so you can have an easy way to reference for multiple choice question in theories okay it can be us okay also of course i want you to do some knowledge check i did not show you any calculations or problems to do but i want you to get any financial statements available okay and then do the computation by yourself again uh, practice makes perfect okay so just a recap i already discussed liquidity ratio and we uh, check the sensitivity of increasing the numerator and decreasing the denominator or increasing the denominator, decreasing the numerator. Again, so our next topic will be, I will continue with activity ratio. Okay, so please, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you will be notified once any video lessons comes out. Thank you again. Please do share and tag your friends for this YouTube channel. Thank you so much.